Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to use the lookup function to find the last value in a series or in a list based on certain criteria. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So first, let's take a look at a more typical scenario. Here I have a list of employees and their salaries for certain years from 2017 down to 2020. And I want to convert this list into more of a grid setup. So I've listed their names here. And in the cells here, I've just used more of a typical index match scenario. The array is column B, which is the salary. The row number is the match function, and I only have one column, so column number is one. And the row number, the match function, the only unique aspect of this is that I've concatenated a couple items here. For example, my lookup, my lookup value is concatenating G2, which is the name, and the left four characters of the title here, which is 2017. If I hit F9, you can see it's Yolanda Medina 2017. And then my lookup array, again, I've concatenated columns A and column C, which is the name and the years in my list here. And then that generates the values in my grid here, and I wrap that in an if error function so that if it generated an error, I would just get a blank. But let's go to our second scenario on sheet two. Here we have a similar list. However, there were three different employees where their salaries increased within the same year. Uh, Andres Rodriguez went from 78 to 80,000 in 2017. Caleb Ramsey, you can see the increase there, and same with Claude Watson in 2019. If I use the same scenario as I did in the first one, what Excel would do with index match is just find the first match of the concatenation of the name and the year, and I would get the lowest value rather than the highest. And that's not what I want. I want to get the last value of that series based on the criteria. So instead, we're going to use the lookup function to accomplish this. So I'm going to select the formula in cell H17 for Andres Rodriguez for 2017, and let's just go through it and see how this works. So again, this is wrapped in an if error function to provide a blank if there is an error. And in my lookup function, my lookup value, I'm looking up the value of two. And my lookup vector is this series here, and we'll go through those in detail. And my resulting vector is column B, which is where the salaries are, which is what I want to pull into my grid. So the key to all this is the lookup vector. Now, what the lookup vector is, I'm taking the number one and dividing it by this multiplication of two different sets of values. So the first set of values is do the names in column A equal G17, which is Andres Rodriguez. So if we take a look at that and I highlight that and I hit F9, you'll see I get a series of trues and falses. False because the first name doesn't match and I get three trues because Andres Rodriguez is the next three values, and then the rest are falses there. So that's the first set. The second set, do the values in column C equal the left four digits of my heading in H15? Now, if we look at the left four digits of my heading there, F9, you'll see I get 2017, but it's in double quotes, and that basically is telling me that that's text. So that's why I have to multiply that times one to convert that text into a value. So if I hit F9 there, notice the quotes are no longer there, and now that's a value. So I'm matching values in column C with a value from that header there. And if I take a look at do the values in column C equal those, and I highlight that, hit F9, 
you'll see again I get a series of trues and falses. This is where 2017 is the value in column C that I'm trying to match for that specific scenario. So now if I look at that whole series there and I hit F9, what I do is get a series of ones and zeros. The trues or falses which are converted to ones and zeros for the name versus the trues and falses that are converted to ones and zeros for the year, multiplying those times each other, I get again a series of ones and zeros. So where Andres Rodriguez and 2017 exist are the second, third, and fourth item in this overall list. So now when I take that series of ones and zeros and divide it into the number one, I get divide by zero, obviously, and then three ones, and then a series of divide by zeros. So now here's how the lookup function works. I want to find the number two in this series of divide by zero or ones. And what the lookup function does, it goes through the whole list until it finds its match. If it doesn't find its match in the list, it goes backwards until it finds the first value that's less than the number it's looking for. It's looking for the number two. It goes through the whole list because it doesn't find it. And so then it goes backwards until it finds the first value that's less than that number. And that would be this third number one. This third number one is the third in the series of Andres Rodriguez and the year 2017. So that's how it comes up with the value of 80,000. So let's just recap here. In my lookup formula, I'm looking for the number two. I'm looking for the number two in a series of values here that are either a divide by zero or the number one. It's not going to find it, so it goes backwards until it finds the first value that's less than the number it's looking for. In this case, that's the third number one, which is the third in the series of Andres Rodriguez and the value 2017. And therefore, my resulting vector in the column B will return an 80,000. And you can see by my highlights, any place where the values differ between these two, Andres Rodriguez 80,000 instead of 78, Caleb Ramsey 55, 750 instead of 55, and Claude Watson 136 instead of 135. So that's how you can use the lookup function to find the last value in a series based on certain criteria. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found it beneficial, please share it, like it, or give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my blog at my website, excel-bytes.com, or any of the social networks you see below. Have a great day, and happy excelling.